Gentlemen, welcome back. So I decided to go ahead and upgrade to Go 1.10. Uh, feel free to do that if you want, but it shouldn't make a difference for this video series. Okay, so now we're going to create a basic server to respond with. In the last video, we got our environment basically set up, and we got a Go install. We have an editor ready to build Go apps, right? And if you have any questions on how to get that set up, please um, post below, and I'll uh, make a video for you showing you exactly how to get to where I'm at right now. But um, I'm under the impression right now that if you're watching this video series, there's a good chance you already use Go. Okay, all right. So the very first thing we do is have a server to respond with, and uh, GoLang comes with a great uh, package built in the net HTTP package that can do pretty much anything you need to do with the web um, as far as uh, communication, routing, these sort of things, right? So let's go ahead and create a basic server. But before we do that, I would like to talk to you quickly about a good version control. If you've ever used something like, uh, for, for your packages, if you've ever used something like Node.js or um, a lot of these other languages, they have really good uh, um, package managers, right? Like uh, NPM is Node Package Manager, but Go has one called DEP, which is the package manager for Go. And I suggest that um, if you are interested in that, I would suggest using DEP. There's a good tutorial series online. Just look up DEP and how to install. It's really easy to install and run. Um, I'd say it's even easier to get running than Go. All right. And we're going to use this in this video series, but at the moment we don't have any package dependencies, so we're not going. We're not. We don't need it, but we do want to init, initialize the folder with what it needs. Okay, so very first thing we need to do is create a folder for our server. So we're going to kind of follow the typical um, package um, structure you see in a lot of Go apps, which is a bin folder and a source folder. Inside source, we're going to create a systems folder for all of our systems. Uh, and in there we need a, a app folder and inside app we need an app file app.go that we can require we can require when we need to so inside here um, first thing we do is name it um, and then we need to import the HTTP library so uh, net HTTP and because initially we want to log a few things we'll include the log as well uh, we need a server type which is going to be a struct in this case with a port of type string uh, we need, there you go we need a function to create a new server um, which I like to do it this way Func new server returns type of server oh my gosh server like so and then we need to create some uh, struct specific functions here uh, methods on the struct object I guess uh, well, actually, these would be functions because we're not actually mutating any data. But well, initialization is m is mutation, so that would be a function, and then the start would be a method, right? Okay. So let's create our first uh, method. We need a pointer to the server object, and we're not going to return anything. We do need to name it, um, and then we need to have a another uh, function here. Oh, this would be a function. Um, start and initialization is init all vowels and this is start the server all right pretty clear straightforward so in here we're going to say s dot port is we're going to hard code it for now we'll do it better later but we're just going to hard code for now um, and then we need to start a server so actually let's say log dot print new line oops print print new line gosh um, initial oops initializing server and then um, log dot print starting server okay and then we need to say HTTP dot listen and serve on the port we don't have a handler at the moment so, um, and then we need to say return server, instance of server, like so, inside our main function up here. We will include this uh, relative path. Um, we're inside the video one folder, so we need to get into source and then system, right? And then app. And then we'll create a server from the app dot new server function. We will initialize the app and then initialize the server and then we'll start the server. 
and let's create a you know what I'm gonna use make for this project let's create a make file touch make file like so let's see we need a compiler go we need a command g uh, cmd we run and then we need a path path will be main.go and then we'll create the default run function we'll say <coughs> excuse me gcc gcmd and uh, g path save that we'll run make and we should have a server oh what did i do uh, main 8 Oh, need to assign it. Oops. There we go. You guys are probably screaming at me. <laughs> uh, and go. There we go. And let's run into localhost 8000. And boom. So the server's running. And we can tell because it responded, hey, I couldn't find this route because there's no handler attached to the server right here. We see no handler. So it's saying, hey, you can't find route. All right. All right. There we go. There's a basic HTTP server in Go. We have uh, our uh, package version control set up. We have a make file so we can create all sorts of cool build stuff. Uh, and we have a main file which requires a new server, initializes it, and starts it. All right, thanks guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. In the next video, we're going to be using Gorilla Mux to start attaching some routes. And we'll go from there. And hopefully pretty soon we'll get into view and we'll have a fully uh, built app with session, login, um, routing, server side and client side, and database connection, and all that fun stuff. I'm even going to get into database version control. There's so many different ways you can do it, and I'm going to show you the way that I prefer to do it. Okay, thank you, gentlemen, and uh, see you in the next video.